everybody, Mrs. Britton is on. Welcome to my channel. On this channel, we study the Word of God and we have begun with the book of the Revelation. We are actually looking at the trumpets in Revelation chapter 8. This is as far as we have come. If there are those of you who are interested uh, in what was previously studied, you can just click on Mrs. Britton is on this YouTube channel and it will take you from chapters 1 right up to the point we are at. And remember to subscribe to this channel. Also invite a friend, a neighbor, a colleague of yours to subscribe because you are learning so much from the Word of God. These series of study of lessons are guiding us and educating us and teaching us the will of God for this earth as this earth moves towards its divine destiny. Friends, I want to tell you that uh, wonderful things, things, amazing things are about to happen on this earth. And let's not push them far into the future. This earth is just about 6,000 or so years old. And Jesus will return. But before he returns, he has shown us in the book of the Revelation and in the Bible at large what to expect so that we can prepare for that stupendous event when he bursts the clouds of glory and comes back to claim his earth. Remember to have your Bible close by. It's important, I say that week after week, it is important that you read for yourself, except you have a disability when it comes to reading. I use the New American Standard Bible, but any version you are comfortable with is acceptable. Let us study the Word of God and let us prayerfully do so. So bow your head with me as we pray to begin. O oh God, your Word is truth. I hold on to your Word. Lord, I pray that all of us who view will be loyal and will choose to be loyal to you every day. For you are our Creator, our Redeemer, and our soon coming King. Praise the Lord. Amen and amen. Friends, join me in this study as we look into lesson number 31. Yes, uh, actually it's lesson number 32. Lesson number 32. The meaning of the trumpets. The meaning of the trumpets. This lesson is a continuation of chapter 8. Of the book of Revelation. So let us get familiar again. We'll read Revelation chapter 8 verses 1 to verse 13. Revelation 8 verses 1 to 13. When the Lamb broke the seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God and seven trumpets were given to them. Another angel came and stood at the altar, holding a golden censer, and much incense was given to him, so that he might add to it the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, with the prayers of the saints, went up before God out of the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and threw it to the earth. And there followed peals of thunder and sounds and flashes of lightning and an earthquake. And the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound them. The first sounded and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and they were thrown to the earth. And a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass 
was burned up. The second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. And a third of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. The third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of waters. The name of the star is called Wormwood, and a third of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died from the waters because they were bitter. The fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars were struck, so that a third of them would be darkened, and the day would not shine for a third of it, and the night in the same way. Then I looked, and I heard an eagle flying in mid-heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to all those who dwell on the earth because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. The Greek words for trumpets and trumpeting occur 144 th times in the Greek translation of the Old Testament. The vast majority of those references, 105 of those 144 references, concern either signaling warfare, worship, and prayer, or a combination thereof. In the book of Numbers, we find a very clear meaning of trumpets. Let's read Numbers chapter 8 verses 8 to 10. The priestly sons of Aaron, moreover, shall blow the trumpets, and this shall be for you a perpetual statute throughout your generations. When you go to war in your land against the adversary who attacks you, then you shall sound an alarm with the trumpets, that you may be remembered before the Lord your God and be saved from your enemies. Also, in the day of your gladness and in your appointed feasts and on the first days of your months, you shall blow the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings. And they shall be as a reminder of you before your God. I am the Lord your God. In verse 8, in ancient Israel, the trumpets were always handled by the priests even in warfare. So there is a spiritual meaning that Israel was to discern in the blowing of the trumpets. And in verse 9, signaling trumpets represented a prayer to God for his intervention in battle. Verse 10, in the temple and on feast days, the blowing of the trumpets invited God's spiritual in intervention in the lives of his people. Most of the trumpets and trumpeting in the New Testament are in Revelation chapters 8 and 9. At the first glance, it might seem that signaling in warfare is a primary meaning in the seven trumpets of Revelation. But the connection between the trumpets and the fifth seal underlines the prayer theme as a primary one here. 
the trumpets are responsive to the prayers of the suffering saints of God. And we read about that in Revelation chapter 6 verses 9 and 10. So let me just reiterate this point. The trumpets are a response to the prayers of the suffering saints of God. It assures them that God has noticed the suffering and even though he may seem silent in their experience, he is already acting in history against those who have persecuted them. Now, let's look at the time when the trumpets begin in Revelation 8 verse 5. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and threw it down to the earth. And there followed peals of thunder and songs and flashes of lightning and an earthquake. The throwing down of the censer of the fire in Revelation chapter 8 verse 5 seemed to suggest a close or a close of probation. The seven trumpets seemed to forecast events in the course of Christian history leading up to that event. A number of indications in the text substantiate this interpretation. Number one, the pattern in the first half of the book of Revelation is that the vision begins with the New Testament era and covers events throughout the Christian uh, throughout Christian history. If you can recall when we did the lessons on uh, chapters 1 and 2 of Revelation, John's visions began with New Testament, the New Testament period, and those visions continue until the end of this age. Number two, whatever the casting down of the censer or the fire means in Revelation 8 verse 5, we have to make it clear that probation is not yet closed at the time of the sixth trumpet. The intercession at the altar is still taking place. And we see that in Revelation chapter 9 verse 13. Then the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden, golden altar, which is before God, saying, uh, which is before God, one saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the gospel is still going forth, even with the throwing down of the censer. Let's look at Revelation chapter 10, verse 11. And then we will look at Revelation chapter 11, verses 3 to 6. Revelation chapter 10, verse 11. It says, But after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God came into them, and they stood on their feet, and great fear fell upon those who were watching them. And then we look at uh, Revelation chapter 11, verses 3 to 6. And I will grant authority to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1260 days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord on the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire flows out of their mouth and devours their enemies. So if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this way. These have the power to shut up the sky so that rain will not fall during the days of their prophesying. And they have power over the waters to turn them into blood and to strike the earth with every plague as often as they desire. 
Three, finally, the proclamation of the gospel ends and the probation fully closes only at the sounding of the seventh trumpet. And we'll find that when we reach Revelation chapter 10. So, the seven trumpets of Revelation seem to cover the whole course of history from John's day, when John was given those visions, right to the close of probation and final events. Let us review because you may need to assimilate the interpretation of the trumpets. Here we go. One, in portraying God's intervention on behalf of his people, Revelation uses imagery of trumpets in the Old Testament. Trumpets were an important part of the daily life of ancient Israel. Let's look at 2 Chronicles chapter 13 verses 14 and 15. When Judah turned around, behold, they were attacked both front and rear. So they cried to the Lord and the priests blew the trumpets. Then the men of Judah raised a war cry. And when the men of Judah raised the war cry, then it was that God routed Jeroboam and all Israel before Abijah and Judah. So, trumpets were an important part of Israel's daily life. Blowing of the trumpets during war. Number two, the sound of trumpets reminded the people of the worship in the temple. Trumpets were also blown in battle, at harvest time, and during festivals. Who are the objects of the judgments of the seven trumpets? Who are the objects? Let's read Revelation chapter 8 verse 13. And then we would look at Revelation chapter 9 verses 20 and 21. Then I looked and I heard an eagle flying in mid heaven saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to those who dwell on the earth because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are abound about to sound. The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of the hands so as not to worship demons and the idols of gold and of silver and of brass and of stone and of wood which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders, nor of the sorceries, nor of the immorality, nor of the thefts. The events triggered by the trumpet in Revelation denote God's intervention in history. In response to the prayers of his people. While the seals concern primarily those who profess to be God's people, the trumpets herald judgments against the inhabitants of the earth. At the same time, they are warnings for those who dwell on the earth to bring them to repentance before it is too late. Three. Blowing trumpets went hand in hand with prayer. During worship in the temple or during festivals, the trumpets reminded God, reminded God, so to speak, of his covenant with his people. They also reminded the people to be ready for the day of the Lord. Let us read Joel chapter 2 verse 1. Blow a trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm. On my holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. Surely it is near. For during battle, 
the trumpet sound gave key instruction and warnings and called upon God to save his people. This concept is the background for the trumpets in Revelation. Yes, friends, the seven trumpets cover the course of events from John's time until the conclusion of Earth's history. Let me remind you of this as we read Revelation chapter 11, verses 15 to 18. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And he will reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who sit on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give you thanks, O Lord God the Almighty, who are and who were, because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. And the nations were enraged, and your wrath came, and the time came for the dead to be judged. And the time to reward your bond servants, the prophets, and the saints, and those who fear your name, the small and the great, and to destroy those who destroy the earth. Yes, friends, that was after the blowing of the seventh trumpet. The trumpets are blown while, in, while intercession goes on in heaven. And the gospel is being preached on the earth. Let's look at Revelation chapter 8 verses 3 to 6. And then we would look at Revelation chapter 8, chapter 10 verse 8 to 11 verse 4. Another angel came and stood up at the altar holding a golden censer. And much incense was given to him so that he might add it to the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints went up before God out of the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and threw it to the earth. And there followed peals of thunder and sounds and flashes of lightning and an earthquake. And the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound them. Now Revelation chapter 10 verse 8 to 11 verse 14. It's a very long uh, verse and we have read snippets of it during this study. And it's actually saying that while the tr that those trumpets are being blown, people on earth still have a chance to pledge their allegiance and loyalty to God. They have a chance to repent. They have a chance to accept Jesus as creator and redeemer and Lord and King. They still have a chance until the seventh trumpet is blown. So friends, God uses varying imagery to arrest our attention about the seriousness of the times in which we live. Salvation is a serious matter. Yes, friends, salvation is a serious matter. Revelation is a serious book. How shall we escape? If we neglect to pay attention to all that God is saying to us in his word. It is important and it is necessary that we listen up for time is quickly moving to its end. Salvation history will soon, yes, it will soon come to an end. So as we close today, friends. I know this lesson got you thinking. Every time I read and study, the Holy Spirit impresses me time and again of the importance of God's word to us. It's not to scare us, but to get us to sit up and pay attention. 
this world as it is will not continue forever. Oh no. Jesus will return. He came once as a baby. He's coming back as king. He's coming back as judge. He is coming back as Lord over all. He will return to claim this earth, to reestablish this earth for the purpose for which it was created, for his glory and for our happiness. And so, friends, we need to pay attention. We need to pay attention for soon, very soon, salvation history will end. Thank you for joining me today. I know you were blessed. I want to encourage you to subscribe and tell someone so that they can subscribe also. And if you have any comments or questions, write them down below. We will interact. And remember, this is lesson 32. <laughs> this is lesson 32. So if you want to learn more, for about Revelation from chapters 1 up to this chapter, chapter 8, there are 32 videos. You can click on any one to learn from the Word of God. Our next topic will be the meaning of the first six trumpets. The meaning of the first six trumpets. Let us pray. Oh God. Thank you once again for your word. Your word is our necessary food because it feeds us spiritual food and it helps us to get ready to meet you because you will come again. And we praise you, O oh God. We praise you for your word. May you bless all those who view. And we ask that soon many of those who view if not all, will pledge their loyalty to Jesus. This is my prayer. Amen. Until next time, when Mrs. Britton is on, when we look at our next lesson, the meaning of the six trumpets, goodbye. <laughs>